It's Mac O'Grady. What a treat today. Here's a slow motion swing of Mac on a tripod. No, uh, glo no gloves on. It's in the back left pocket, you can see. And just you can spend an hour on the alignments going through this video. Today, we're going to work on the hands, showing the wrists and how they work. The average Joe golfer should totally copy this. The elite golfer, take a look. You need to do this, too, for consistency. So we'll just go right zooming in on these hands here. The ball's in the middle. The butt of the club's lined up to the inside of the left thigh. This is a very neutralish grip. I mean, there's, like Tiger said, his, his grip is more neutral so he can do more things with the ball. That means that Max hand is turned about 15 degrees on the left hand, maybe one or two knuckles, not much, not absurd, and then a slight bend in the back of that right wrist. So a super uber neutralish grip. Okay. And as Mac starts to take this back, there's very quiet hands. And that's basically what I'm trying to get to today for y'all is that the center of the wrist is right here. And that's where the hinging happens, right? And you're going to notice as Mac goes further in the golf swing, this is P2 here, and you can see that the wrist, left wrist is not cocking at all, really. Maybe a degree or two, but not much. As he goes through there at his P3 Morad system checkpoint, when that uh, left arm is level to the ground, the shaft should be at 70 degrees hinge, not 90. Well, he's hit that number for sure. So it's super quiet. And of course, if you have quiet hands, you're going to be stable. So the wrist is flat. That left wrist has not gone out of the flat position, right? So you would wonder, well, then how does he get to 90? He does it with the right hand. Okay. So now you can see a little bit of a sharper angle in the back of that right wrist. And if we look in here, for the left wrist, it is flat. You could put a credit card underneath that watch, which is a really good drill. My students love that. I put credit cards under the uh, the, the watch, or yeah, most people have an Apple watch these days. But if you're wearing a glove, it goes right under the glove, and then you don't bend the card. And that's how you stay quiet with the hands, shooting for that left wrist to be flat and uh, very consistent. So uh, the other part that is so good about this is that the spacing of the arms to the body, you can just see how it's just so quiet, not changing. Uh, really awesome. So in, in this area here, it looks like the angles are sharpening, but you don't see that left wrist doing a whole bunch. Again, it's really the back of this right wrist still. It is flexing, or I should say it's bending, cocking, wrinkles are in the back of that right wrist and we can't see it's hidden now so we back that out again and i want to go back into so you can see it more clearly beautiful alignments there so here we are at p5 and it looks like he's got 110 degrees of hinging now where did that happen yeah that's the key right so super quiet there you want to have the spacing out here so you can add it in and that's really the major point I wanted to make today because most of my students, they do it early and they do it too much. Or they get up into kind of you could call it this corner of the swing up here, this corner up in here. And that's where all the sloppiness comes in with a lot of players. Because it's going fast by the time it gets up there and then we change directions. So we have this corner up there. Centrifugal force uh, takes over. Well, Mac knows better than that, and he definitely teaches us. Uh, I had the pleasure of being with him in 2002, how to be quiet like that. So most players are over bending stuff and even going, you know, across the back back there, uh, which is really changing the wrist joints a ton and creating a bunch of speed and narrowness. And, of course, that unravels on the way down. You get steep and other things happen there. So you're trying to shoot for um, quiet hands up here now. If you take a look at Stricker, he has the quiet hands as well. Tiger, super quiet. And then there's a guy named Scheffler, number one in the world. He takes it back with hardly any wrist cocking going back, like most of the really good players do. So they are moving the arms up and stretching uh, the arms into the torso. And then when they get here, you can see the narrowness coming down as they start to add that in at the right time, which is just after the top. A little bit down and we start to get a little of the arm stretching 
into a short and narrow cycle. Okay. All right. So we're still flat with that left wrist coming in. And now you're going to see the magic where the arms are back down. Mac is still over the ground. Uh, if you notice, he's got these stripes on his hat here. And he put those in in the mid 2000s there for students and himself. He put one, he put them on the inside of the visor so you could kind of see where your eyes are. You can just see it's just not moving, right? So he's coming down, very stable head. The alignments of the wrist still look flat. The right hand is going to now start to release the club. So that's super cool to look at. That left wrist, though, uh, looks almost in a neutral position. Not much to uncock. But the right hand is going to deliver and get the angles out. And for you out there that are the experts of coaching and such, the shaft is termed out of alignment, out of line when it's not in line with the left shoulder. And if we're not in line with the left arm, excuse me, if we're not in line with the left arm, that means we have loaded the energy into the club so that we can unload it to an inline position there. Look at that. So now that shaft is just straight up right to the uh, left shoulder over the left ankle. There you go. So those are alignments to achieve. Let me put a straight line in there for you guys. Right in here, delivering the club, hitting the ground, taking the turf after the ball, compressing the ball. The hat is, visor still down there. We're right here. We're getting in line with that left arm. And there you can just see the collisions. Awesome. There we go. The bend in that shaft. He's putting the hammer down on this thing for sure. So a lot of good stuff going on here. Then he goes in the beautiful follow through spot here, about 45 degrees with the shaft there into the frame. And then another interesting thing with the wrist. Now, this needs to be worked on and it's kind of magical. Hogan had a very uncocked release as well. So Max hand right here, as you can see, that right hand looks a little like this. And that's called the neutral wrist because the wrist is level. OK, there's no hinge there. Well, he takes that thing up all the way to the finish up here. Now, look at the le the left arm to shaft. OK, well, there's some hinging there going on with the left wrist. Right. But the right wrist is neutral. It's like. Yeah, really trained and really good. You can see right there, the right wrist is starting to bend again. OK, so. Um, that's the fun thing about working on this stuff because you can just and should only pick out little pieces such as this quiet takeaway with good wrist alignments and try to keep that width. The right elbow is what's the master controller of the width. Uh, if you let it get past 90 degrees, the club will get sloppy and the wrist might start to hinge and you get narrow. But here we're looking for 70. Maybe 80. And then it can go to 90 to 100 degrees coming down. And you start to get that wonderful lag in there that we're all looking for. And whammo. So there, this is the first of a four-part series I'm going to do. And we'll get some comments going. You guys can chat in here. And we'll just light this thing up one more time with Mac just swinging the club. Beautiful alignments there. Hat still on there. No really wrist cocking going on, loading coming down, good hip tilt. Now he's going to the extension of the pelvis. A ton of stuff to talk about, guys. So anyway, just a pleasure to bring this to you. Hope you enjoy this. Uh, please uh, subscribe and hit the like button. Leave some comments. And let's uh, get this thing rolling one more time.